Hello and welcome to Console Training. My name is Alex Hughes and today we're going through the way that I lay out my lighting console uh, when using Grand MA2. So uh, let's begin. I'm going to begin roughly with just a walk through what the screens are and where they are. So if we start with an on-PC on PC session for a second, we see that we've got a small little window screen down here. And then on the right hand side we have screen 2, 3 and 4. Now the order can be slightly confusing to those that are building a show on on PC and haven't used a console before. But if we jump across to our little graphic here, we can see that that little screen that we were talking about before, is screen number one, which is the little one that's on the on PC screen. Screen two is directly above your encoders. Screen three on a uh, full size is above your first set of faders and screen four is above your second set. So if you've got an MA2 light, you've only got screen 3, 2, and 1. If you've got an ultra light, you only have screen 2 and 1. And if you've got a full size, like we've got pictured here, you've got all four screens. And then you can also connect two external screens. But we'll cover that as well a little bit later. So let's begin. So the most important thing when setting up an MA console, especially if you're doing lots of shows back to back and they're slightly different, is to build your own user profile which is the way that a bunch of settings are stored, including the way that your desk actually looks. So we're going to start on screen two, which is your main screen. And the way that I do mine is I run a little view thing along the bottom so that no matter what I build, I've always got my views ready to go. So I'm just going to call this one blank because we'll be referring back to this one and we'll cover that little thing that came up in a second. So most of the time I'm using a uh, MA2 light. So I position my views and I'll delete things if I'm not using them, such as if I don't have any fixtures with gobos in them, I won't run a gobo pool. But most of these end up being pretty much the same. Uh, normally it's, I can press my beam and my focus down and I'll delete the ones that I don't want. And then the one that normally ends up at the end is either an all, which we've covered in previous videos, it essentially allows you to store all different presets into one embedded preset, but not lock it down to a sequence. And then also a dynamic one's a really good one to play with. Now, looking at that screen, we can see that, yeah, we can read it and we know that they're in the right order. But if you click on the little yellow circle, you can change the frame color. And I like to, I've got a very certain color scheme that I use, so I know what's happening. But it just helps when we do them all to break up this coloring a little. Because then you can really start to see the differences and you can see what's on what preset. And it becomes sort of a... Uh, Sort of a muscle memory thing, especially for me. So what we've got is our position presets, our go pre presets, our color presets, beam, focus, and this D1 that says D focus changes depending on what we're in. And this is a really fantastic one to have because if we go across to shapers, we have shapers. If we go to control, we have control. So this is a really good one, especially for things like gobos and stuff where you don't want to have to fill your entire screen with gobos. Just being able to quickly go in and grab whatever you need is incredibly useful. Now we're going to also color view just so that uh, it stands out. And then we're just going to go click the store button, click on number one, and we get this little prompt which is asking what we want to save and where we want to save it to. So by default, it's going to save to the screen that we're working on. But if we wanted to save like an all desk look, so everything that's on all the screens, we'd just click on all the screens we wanted here. We just want screen two, and I'm going to call this one presets. Now here we've got one that says presets. It's got a little image, which is good, but we can also jump in and we can change it so that it's just by its name, like so. And then we're just going to move it along to there. We're then going to recall our blank one, which we can see has given us our bar back, and then I can just do the groups one. So with the groups one, I do it slightly differently. I actually scroll up with the groups one and I put in matrix. 
and then we'll import a, bit, a bunch of MHRIX in just quickly. So MHRIX we've covered before are just a way of uh, selecting groups and manipulating data. So let me go to three of three. Lovely. And then we can store that. And we'll call it groups. And we can just go back and forth between whatever we want. Now the benefit of the way that I run it is that it means that if I'm on a light, I can use screen two and three. And all I have to do is go views, bring this view thing across. And normally by default, I store one view, which gives me what I would call my home view. So we're going to call it prog or programmer. And then I know that if I'm on a, on a light, normally it'll be presets here, groups on the third one. And then I can do the same thing with the, uh, this screen because the resolution is exactly the same. I can bring whatever I want. So now that we've got a very basic sort of uh, view set up, let's have a look at my one and the way that I do it. So if we go into setup, go user and profile setup, we can also see how to export things. So the user we've just created is called new. So once you've built it, once you're happy with it, you can export the profile here and you can export it to either internal, which would be the desk or the on PC session or the USB attached. We'll break up and we'll go through the difference between a user profile and users. Many users can be logged into one user profile, but a user profile is where all that data and programmer information is kept. So I can have five different users that are all sharing the same user profile. Users are essentially logins, user profiles are essentially just the actual data. So we can see that we've got a user created here called Alex using our AHUS profile, which is here. But let's delete him for the moment and we'll create a new one for me. Let's call me Alex and we're going to go with my user profile and then we're going to click login. We can also give it a password if we want and it'll also tell us how many are logged in. Right now we don't need to do that. So now we've logged in, we can take a look. So here we can see the way that I sort of lay out my desk. So down the bottom I've just got the base effects including a little pool over here, which is really high scrolled up because when you save a view, it actually saves the position of all these preset uh, pools. So I've got my effect one here, just so that I can still have my clock and not lose this space. If we go across to screen two, we can see the way that I was talking about doing my groups, where I run them across the top, then I have a matrix for what I need. And a matrix actually come along with your user profile, which is good. Then we have presets, which is what we were building before. This is one that doesn't include the dynamic one, but it varies on what I'm doing. I've then got a support one. So the, the last time I was using this user profile, we had another user on that just had one screen. So we've got groups, color, position, gobo, and focus for them. I've then just got a massive effect one that I can pull all my effects out of. I've got a programmer, which is just a view of a programmer. I've then got any layouts. So if we had any layouts, they'd live in here. Some sequence based stuff. So we've got the executor pool or sequence exec tracking contents, stage view, uh, stuff to do with time code. Then I've got a macro pool. Then I've just got a masters one. And then we've got my favorite blank. And it's the same across all of the screens except for apparently screen four, but that's okay because we can get this set up. So you might've noticed that my views start at 101. This is so that if I'm working with other people, I can uh, I can have my views and be out of the way of everyone else. And you can see that when we, when we got to the page, they started here. Well, I don't really want them to start there. So if you scroll your little view across, you can actually start your preset pool at the number you want. So 101, drag it out, and then we're going to update this view. And there we have my views. Now for me, it does differ. I do have some views that are custom. So on my, uh, on my screen three, which if we quickly go back to the graphic, we'll remind ourselves screen three is the one in the middle if we're on a full size. I've got just a couple of playback ones. And this is because I'm still getting off 
just running views dynamically like I do. So there are a couple that end up here that I've never really used, favors, I've split up my effects, and this is a great example of having uh, different views that just start at different effect numbers. So we can see that this one starts at 49, this one's 177, this one's 273, and then I've got one for show effects which starts way down just so I can encompass that. My little screen down the bottom doesn't really change. Occasionally I dump it for macros if I have to. Uh, and then we've got our externals. And our externals obviously are a different resolution, but we can do the same thing with them if we want. And as you can see, I've already got external ones set up. So clearly I've used this with an external touch screen or something. Uh, nice, really simple little video on how to lay out your console. I would heavily, highly involve and suggest that you uh, build your own user profile because it'll save you a lot of time and it'll really improve your muscle memory. Anyway, thanks for watching.